Our first talk will be for, uh, by Thomas Kirchner from Aachen University. So, welcome this afternoon um, to my talk about the characterization and improvement of the catalytic activity of Clostridium lungdali in a microbial electroreduction setup, um, application. So, sorry. The background of our research is a research cluster telemet fuels from biomass, uh, where we develop novel synthesis and production routes to produce sustainable biofuels tailor-made for clean combustion. Um, the cluster has two major research fields. The first uh, deals with the way from the biomass to the biofuel, and the second is um, the development of new combustion engines. So we are located in the way from the biomass to the biofuel, and um, this happens in two uh, several steps. First, the wooden or green biomass is degraded to a second generation biomass like cellulose or lignin, which is then further degraded to carbohydrates, so C6, C5 sugars, which are then are fermented to one of these platform chemicals like idaconic acid or livolinic acid. And these are then further reduced to um, one of these um, fuel components. So we are developing a um, process to reduce idaconic acid to fuel component. And the challenge here is uh, that this step is also the one with the highest energy demand in the whole process. So where does the energy come from? So um, it first comes from electricity you need for the separation. Uh, or the compression of hydrogen for um, the reduction process, or this is a classic chemical route, and um, of course for of course heat for drying. Um, we want to overcome this um, high energy input with microbial electroreduction, and our workhorse um, is Clostridium lungdali. It's a gram-positive um, acetogen which is able to reduce carbon dioxide. Uh, with an electro as electron donor, and it's um, also said that the accumulation of acetate is an indicator for the cathodic activity. Um, Nevin and Al published that the electron recovery in the products is very good, more than 82%, and the product concentration of acetate is more than 100 uh, micromoles after six days. Uh, for us, it was also very important that the genome has been sequenced since uh, 2010. So our approach to use microbial electroduction to produce biofuels has two parts. In the first part, we want to characterize the uh, um, um, cathodic reaction of Clostridium mundali, and we want to improve it. And the second part is uh, the expanding of the genetic capabilities of Clostridium mundali by um, introducing um, um, synthetic idaconic acid activation and reduction pathway that should enable Clostridium mundali to reduce idaconic acid to, um, to one of these new biofuels like uh, methylene butyrolactone. Both parts uh, are then combined to a novel biocatalyst that should be able to reduce platform chemical to fuel component using energy coming from a cathode. So um, my PhD thesis is focused on the characterization and improvement um, of the cathodic activity of Clostridium lungdali. And um, our first question was, um, what is the mechanism of electron uptake of Clostridium lungdali, and um, especially which is the better option for our approach? So should we be focused on the direct electron transfer or should we use um, hydrogen-based microbial reduction? To investigate that, we are using this experimental setup. So it's a um, H-type glass reactor, which is anaerobically cultivated at 30 degrees, and we're using a defined medium um, omitting carbon source, a reducing agent, and resacerin. Uh, both chambers have a um, volume of 450 milliliters and are continuously flush with carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Um, we use carbon materials for working in counter electrode and uh, silver silver chloride uh, reference electrode, um, as well as a gas port to investigate the composition of our headspace. Um, one of our first experiments um, was um, to identify the, yeah, um, the, the correct potentials we have to apply um, to investigate it. 
um, we um, took first um, minus 600 millivolt against silver silver chloride um, to see okay do we have hydrogen production here or don't we so as you can see we could not measure any hydrogen and we also tested minus uh, 900 millivolts against silver silver chloride and here we had a very good hydrogen production with a good electron recovery so with that knowledge um, we started our electrochemical characterization of clostridium dali and in our experiments we always have two phases in the first phase we apply um, a potential of minus 900 millivolt against silver silver chloride to feed hydrogen to clostridium dali which is a very good energy um, source for clostridium dali maybe you know it's a model organism for syngas fermentation and um, in the second phase, we apply a higher potential of minus 550 millivolts against silver silver chloride to characterize the bioelectrocatalytic phase. Uh, what you see here is our two parallel reactors from one experiment. So now let's have a deeper look into the single phases first. Um, the microbial growth phase, what you see here is um, two to three days after inoculation, uh, the microbes start to do something. So you see it um, in the increasing um, current transfer. And around two days later, so from day five on, um, we could measure acetate. And as long we could also measure that as long as we produce hydrogen, uh, we can also produce acetate. So when we look into the Columbic efficiency of um, both uh, reactors, um, we can say that from the complete charge we transferred, we can find around 1% in acetate, um, 2 to 3% in hydrogen we could measure in the headspace, um, 6 to 8% in planktonic biomass, and around 40% in cathode-bound biomass. But um, still around 50% of the energy we transferred we couldn't find in any products. When we look into the next phase, uh, the bioelectrocatalytic phase, you see here, of course, we transfer much less bio, uh, much, much, uh, much less current. And at the same time, we could see in this experiment, as well as in other experiments we did, um, that the acetate we produced um, goes down until zero. And when we look into the Columbic efficiency here, um, we could not found any acetate production or something like that. Uh, we couldn't found any other products. Um, and we think um, that the acetate we produced in the first phase is most probably be consumed by the microbes. And surprisingly, we could also measure hydrogen in the headspace here. We think that this is caused by a pH shift, for example. Um, and here, we couldn't explain 95% of the energy we transferred here. So. When we sum this up, we can say that um, we can produce biomass uh, from electrochemically produced hydrogen. And most of the biomass is attached to the electrode. Um, we could also produce acetate um, under hydrogen evolution conditions. And under no hydrogen evolution conditions, we think that acetate is most probably consumed. But um, even after acetate is consumed, we could recultivate Clostridium nungali at the end of the experiment. Um, and um, we think that most of the unassigned charge goes to hydrogen evolution because um, it's not that easy to measure hydrogen. It directly goes everywhere. And um, as soon as we do not have an online measurement method, for example, we think that we miss lots of hydrogen that is produced. So, but with that knowledge, um, we focused our development on the hydrogen-based microbial reduction process. And um, so after the characterization, I now want to tell you something about our strategy to improve the process now with a focus on um, the um, hydrogen-based microbial electroreduction. So for the improvement, we developed a wholesale mutagenesis tool. Um, our requirements were um, we want to use it in a microbial electroreduction cell. Um, we want to control the mutagenesis, so we want to have an on and off function, and we want to have an option to save our improvements. So our solution was to develop a mutator plasmid, 
which is a plasmid with an inducible promoter that controls the mutagenic element. Um, when you have your plasmid, um, you transfer the plasmid in the organism of interest, then you can induce a mutagenesis under a specific selection pressure, for example, um, hydrogen as um, energy source, for example. And when you then measure uh, an improvement at one point, for example, a higher OD or um, a higher product concentration or something like that, um, you can cure the plasmid and save the improvement. Um, this is a map of our final construct. It uh, took us um, years to construct it because Clostridium genetics is not that easy. Um, and here we use uh, DNA polymerase 4 as mutagenic element. It's an error-prone polymerase and part of the SOS system. And it um, plays a key role in adaptive evolution as a main replication polymerase. Uh, this is known from Bacillus and um, E. coli, for example. This one is controlled by uh, the Clostridium lac promoter, which is an inducible promoter that works in Clostridium nungdali. And for the curing, um, we integrated a gram-positive temperature-sensitive origin of replication that replicates plasmid at 30 degrees and uh, can be cured at 37 degrees. So our first target to test our um, new device was um, um, the adaptation of Clostridium nungdali to lower pHs. Um, the reason was that um, the reduction of idaconic acid normally takes place at lower pHs and that are optimal for Clostridium nungdali. And the other reason was uh, that um, the experiments were easy to handle. What you see here is um, the wild type and three generations of our induced um, mutator strain. And what you see here is the first generation grows better then the wild type, the second generation, nearly double that good. And in third generation, um, the third generation grows um, significantly less fit um, than the wild type. We think that um, this is caused by an accumulation of um, lethal mutations in the end. Um, but we took the best candidate here, um, cured the plasmid and made cryostocks from it. And then we took the cryostocks and recultivated them in um, PTC medium with a pH of 5.9, so optimal growth medium for Clostridium lumdali. And when we compare it to the wild type, we could see that we had optimal uh, normal growth under optimal conditions. And from that, um, we transferred um, the cultures to again to PTC medium with a pH of 3.5. And what you see here, we could um, repeat our results from the experiment before. So that's where we said that our pH adaptation is uh, stable. So to sum it up, um, we could find out that um, again, uh, Clostridium nundali can grow with electro electrochemically produced hydrogen with acetate as a main product and that it builds biomass under these conditions. We think that acetate is consumed under no hydrogen evolution conditions and um, Clostridium lungdali stays viable. Um, we could develop a wholesale mutagenesis tool and create its first stable adaptations. And in the next month, um, on, we already started to confirm our acetate consumption theory with um, labeled carbon experiments. Um, we continue, of course, the evolution of Clostridium lungdali strains for improved microbial electroreduction. And then we will uh, characterize the new strains in reactor experiments and we'll combine them with a, a synthetic articondic acid reduction pathway. So now I'm at the end and I want to thank my supervisor, Professor Rosenbaum, uh, my former um, postdoc, Dr. Bastian Molitor, and my student, Sarah Schulz and of course the whole team of the IMB Aachen, um, the TaylorMade Fuels from Biomass Research Cluster and the DFG for funding. And then um, it was very important to say, Miriam says hello to all of you and she's very upset that she cannot be here. And with that, I'm at the end and thank you for your attention. Um, yes, um, the question was what the organism uh, does with acetate. So, um, ethanol.
Um, last month in September, Peter Dürer from the University, uh, University of Ulm um, published a paper where he um, suggested a pathway um, where Clostridium nodali takes up um, acetate and makes ethanol from it. Um, it was just a model um, where he could calculate that is, um, it, it's an energy benefit for the organism. And um, that's what we could do. But we couldn't uh, measure any e e uh, ethanol. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, we, we, we know that because we had these uh, problems with uh, the idaconic acid activation and reduction pathway. And uh, it uh, took us also years to find a way to activate uh, idaconic acid. Um, we found that out very recently, so I cannot answer the question completely at the moment. But um, yeah, maybe we can have a look into the paper from Peter Dürer because he tried to explain it. If I un understood your uh, method right for the mutagenesis, you end up with a population of mutants, every one of which should be different? Um, yeah, we, we do not have um, a mutated single cell, right? This is correct. Okay. Uh, what's the advantage of that method versus just chemical mutagenesis? Um, good question. Uh, so our idea was, so we, we wanted to test it uh, in our reactors and uh, when, when you have an erect run over a couple of months, for example, um, then you have to put in your chemical, you have to extract your chemical and this would be um, a possibility um, to do it without yeah, many, many work. So we wanted to disrupt our system as less as possible. Questions? Thank our speaker.